Welcome to this video on inference for sampling and inference for experiments. By the end of this video, you should be able to explain the concept of sampling variability when making an inference about a population and how sample size affects sampling variability. You should also be able to explain the meaning of st statistically significant in the context of an experiment and use simulation to determine if the results of an experiment are statistically significant. So what we have here is we performed an experiment on 10 students. They were randomly assigned to drink water flavored with caffeine drops and the remaining 10 students were assigned to drink water with non, no caffeine water drops. Were our findings statistically significant? So here's a table that shows the pulse rate changes for each group. And so the first thing we want to do is we want to find the difference in the means of pulse rates for the first group. And then we're going to ask, answer the question, does your initial reaction lead you to believe that they found evidence that caffeine does or does not increase heart rate? Explain. All right, so to find the mean difference, I actually did the work for the math for you. There's the averages. So we have the final pulse rate minus initial pulse rate for the two groups. So we have a mean difference of 1.2. All right, so does that make you feel like there's a big difference? Do you think caffeine makes a difference? I mean, I don't know. Is 1.2 heartbeats a lot? I don't know. So I, that's not a very satisfying answer, but I just don't know that if how it relates. So um, maybe, maybe it is a big number. I just can't tell. Um, so some possible explanations for this. So really we got two things that it could be. Either it's the caffeine or it's not. Really is what it is. So caffeine is one reason. And the other reason could be a coincidence. So now the coincidence could be a placebo effect. It could be um, maybe they ran into class late and their heart was pumping really fast. Maybe they had a bunch of caffeine already. Who knows? It's some sort of variable here that's could make it just a pure coincidence or it's the caffeine. Those are really our only two choices here. So to try to decide if the difference in pulse rate is big enough to be convincing, we will do a simulation of the data. So now convincing, there's this word. We've talked about this since the first day of class when we did the Joy Smelling Parkinson's thing, Joy Milton. So hopefully you're kind of thinking about that. What kind of numbers would be convincing? So I ran a simulation. So what we did is we had some cards with these caffeine amounts on them, these differences in pulse rates. And we randomly assigned them to groups. So we had these cards and we shuffled them all up and we randomly assigned them, not looking at the numbers. There was a caffeine group and a non-caffeine group. And then we found the averages just by randomly putting them into the groups. All right, and so the numbers I ended up with just through random shuffling, this is what I got. Okay. All right, so here's our 20 students. All the numbers were the same as in our experiment. I just shuffled them up, randomly assigned them. So we want to find the mean. So the mean, you can add these all up and divide by 10. And here I got 2.2. And here I got 3.3. .3. All right, let's see what we can do with that. All right, so on the back, we have find the mean change for each group. So what I want you to do is here's our mean difference of negative 1.1. We did our caffeine minus no caffeine. And I had the rest of the class run the same simulation. And here is our data. 
pause the video and copy this down. When you're done, restart the video. All right, so we have our class data and each dot, whenever you're trying to, I ask the question, what does a single one of these dots represent? Remember to think about how that dot came about. It came from subtracting the means. So it's the difference in the means and we did one trial. That was just from one time that we did it. If caffeine has no effect, because we were just randomly distributing the cards to the different groups, it didn't matter what numbers were on them. We weren't paying attention to that. All right, so now what percentage of the dots are greater than or equal to the difference in the means of 1.2 found in the experiment on the other side? So when we look at our graph, here's 1.2. So we want to know as extreme or further, if you remember our chapter two, we had that with our normal curves, we would go as extreme or further when we were talking about some percentages. So I wanna know in our trial, how much, how many times did this happen? So I've got one, two, three, four, five at 1 1.2 or greater. Five out of the 29 people who completed the simulation. So when I do this math, I get 17.2%. 17.2% is a very large number. Do you remember the magic number of what makes a difference of something being statistically significant or not? If we think back, if we have less than 5%, if this number had been less than 5%, this would have been considered statistically significant. Okay, but if it's greater than 5%, it's not all that unusual. So it's not statistically significant. All right, so with that in mind, let's see, we're gonna interpret. So we made an assumption here way back that caffeine has no effect. So assuming that caffeine has no effect, so we're assuming that there's no effect on heart rate. There's a 17.2% probability of getting a difference of 1.2 or greater purely by chance. We didn't even do an experiment. We just shuffled some cards and dealt them out. And we got the same results as our experiment 17.2% of the time. So it really wasn't that unusual. So do we think the difference in the means we found in our experiment was due to the caffeine or occurred purely by chance? Because it's not, st st not statistically significant, This could just be a coincidence.